Hi friends, it's Raven. As you know, I'm doing a no spend challenge for 2021 so that I can try and pay off some debt, save some money, and hopefully buy a schoolie in the near future um, so I can travel and see the country and the world and meet new people and all that jazz. So um, I already completed January, so my very first month of this no spend challenge year is complete. And I'm going to look back at my bullet journal and see if I um, succeeded with any of the goals that I had set for this month. So let's get into it. First thing we have is my money pages, which includes my debt tracker and my savings goals. So for January, I actually have quite a few boxes checked off and I'm super excited about it. Um, but we'll get into how much I paid off in a minute. Next, we have my weight loss, which I haven't been able to mark off any of the poundages on this side yet, and that is okay. I'm not focusing so much on the poundage as much as inches and how I feel. Um, but so far, I have my numbers all written down. So I took my measurements in the very beginning of January, and then I just took them again today. And this is how many inches I've lost so far. So I lost a quarter of an inch off my neck, uh, half an inch off my bust, an inch and a half off my waist. I'm so excited about that. Um, my hips didn't change. I lost about half an inch off of my booty. <laughs> I lost a whole inch off of each arm. I'm so excited about that. And I lost about an inch to an inch and a half between my two legs. So the right leg, I lost an inch and a half. The left leg, I lost an inch. So my total inches lost for this month, January, was 7.25 inches. And I'm so excited about that. So if you want to see more about like my weight loss journey specifically, comment down below and let me know because I don't know if I should include videos like that or not. Um, but I'm just marking down how many inches I've lost and I'm super excited for what I see so far. So if you want to see like meal plans and workout videos and things like that, let me know so I know what you guys want to see. The next thing that I added to my bullet journal that I did not have before was a full page of um, manifestations. Um, so things that I can recite and put out into the universe of things that I want in return. So things like health, wealth, um, you know, just there's a bunch on here. Each one is a different sentence that means something different to me. And it's very specific for me, but I really wanted to have a page dedicated to the, um, to the manifesting of what I want out of my journey. Okay, and then the next thing that I added that I did not have in my bullet journal before, and I need to decorate it still, but is my wish list. So the things that I was really tempted to buy this last month, I decided I want to write down. So then that way, you know, this time next year, I can see what things I had that I did not buy that I probably would have. Um, so far I have a couple things, but I think I'm going to save that for the end of the year and we'll just go through the whole list of what my wish list was for 2021. Okay, and then we are into January. So I have my goals here of what um, I wanted to succeed with in January and let's see if I accomplished any of them. So number one was no biting my nails and I did it you guys. I haven't bit my nails all of January. I don't know if you guys can see, my nail polish is really crappy right now, but they are looking beautiful and healthy and I have not bit my nails and I'm so excited about that. I've been biting my nails since I was like three years old and it is a habit that is so hard to break, but so far I'm really proud of myself and I succeeded with that goal so far. Hopefully I can keep it up. Um, next one is journal daily and this one I started strong, you know, the first week and then I kind of plummeted down. Um, it's a habit that I'm not used to and that's, you know, kind of the point of um, these goals is I want to try and create new habits and um, this was one that I was not able to stick with this month, but I might try to do it next month. Um, the third one was to read a book and me and my husband, we read together, like I read out loud and he listens or vice versa, but we read together almost every night before bed um, for about like half an hour to an hour before bed. So we are in the middle of a book. We are about like 58% done or something like that because um, we read it on our phones, like on Audible and Kindle or whatever, Kindle Unlimited. Um, so we read it off our phones and so far we are in the middle of it. We are almost done with that and it's getting really good and I'm excited to finish it. The next one is to drink more water and I feel like most days I succeeded, but there's quite a few days that I totally 
spaced on it or I just did not succeed with it. So again, it's a habit that I want to try and create myself, but I have wasn't able to nail that habit down this month. So hopefully I will be able to next month. But I have been trying to be more conscious about it. So how I've been trying to drink more water is I have my computer. I have two computers that I work from and I have my water bottle on the one side of it. So every time I notice my water bottle, I take a sip from it. And that's how I try to remember to drink more water is every time I visually see my water bottle and think like, oh, I should drink some water, then I'll drink some right away. So that's one tip that has kind of helped me this last month to drink more water. Um, the next one is to unplug before bed, which we also kind of failed at with that too, um, because we've been reading off of the phone. So to be able to read off your phone, then you're kind of still plugged in, if you will, and so that one kind of contradicted one of the other goals on the list. Um, and then the next one was to wake up earlier. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I want to be a morning person. I'm really not, but I want to try and like change my patterns to become more of a morning person and one way that I did try to do this I did not succeed with that this month but one way I tried to do that was set multiple alarms on my phone and I also have one of those sunrise lamps and for the longest time I've had that turned off because it was annoying and I'd rather sleep in but I re-plugged it in so now it like it's a really cool lamp, um, but it like starts out really dark and red and then it slowly turns more into like a bright light. So it kind of mimics a natural sunrise, which is supposed to help you naturally wake up. So I feel like that has helped quite a bit. But would I say I'm more of a morning person now and have been waking up earlier? Probably not. <laughs> So that was all of my goals and I'm actually pretty happy with how many of the goals I was able to do. So like we're in the middle of the book that I'm really excited about and I have been drinking more water than I was previously so that's good. And my biggest one that I'm super proud of myself for is the fact that I have not been biting my nails. Um, like I said I really need a new manicure but I have not been biting my nails and I'm super proud of myself. Okay, and then I had a tracker. So I feel like this actually helped quite a bit for um, staying on top of what I was able to accomplish and like with my goals. So I have my tracker here. I did not meditate daily. I did meditate a couple times, but I did not do it daily like I really wanted to. Um, so again, that's another habit that I want to eventually develop. And hopefully next month or the next coming up months, I'll be able to focus on that more. And then my water goals, again, like it started out really strong, kind of went downhill, and then I started drinking more water again more towards the end of the month. Um, and then healthy food, again, most days were pretty good, but some days were still pretty bad. But I feel like that also kind of ties in with the fact that I didn't really do a lot of grocery shopping this month because I wanted to focus on eating what was already in my cupboards. So there were some days that I was eating ramen noodles and macaroni and cheese and they weren't exactly the healthiest things. Um, but now this next month, I probably will do a little bit more grocery shopping and get more healthier foods. So then um, I'll be able to check off more boxes. And then working out, I'm so proud of myself, but I have been working out almost daily. And that's because I did um, a blog Lottie's challenge, like a 21 day challenge, because she designed that to specifically form a habit. And it worked. I was actually able to form a habit out of working out, where now if I skip a day, it feels kind of weird. So um, I feel like that was definitely, definitely worth trying. And I'll link a description down below if you guys want to try her 21 day challenge. It was amazing. It was hard. <laughs> there was days I wanted to throw up. There was days I just, I was like cursing her out through the app and I felt so bad, but um, she accomplished her goals. So. And I feel like with all these different habits that I want to change, it's important for me to focus on one habit at a time. So trying to do and form, you know, five new habits at once is going to be very hard. So I feel like focusing one at a time until I have that habit really um, buckled down that then I add in a second habit. So I feel like the working out now is definitely a habit in me. So now the next one will be adding meditation on top of that. So hopefully that'll become a habit connected with the first habit that I developed. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, and then lastly is my budget. Did I accomplish all of my goals with my no spend challenge and my budget? Um, I'm going to have a link up here that is going to show um, me creating my budget at the beginning of the month. And I'm going to do a new budget tomorrow so you guys can look for that. Um, but so did I stick to my budget? 
So I adjusted my incomes based off of what they actually were because in the beginning I just did kind of an estimate and you know each paycheck is a little bit different depending how many hours I get. So I rounded it out but um, as I got paid I filled those in. And then I also got a refund on something that was $200. So that went towards my income and I got a stimulus check. So that also went towards my income. So my income was a lot higher than I thought it was going to be this month. So I adjusted the rest of it accordingly. So, um, you know, like my bills are pretty much the same. So for other, I did adjust that a little bit because most of it was to cover the afterpay payments that I had left from like Christmas and things like that. Um, but I also adjusted it for a little bit higher because I wanted to get some new equipment to be able to film better videos. So I got like an overhead mount, for example. So now I have a more stable way to show you how I lay out my budget. So hopefully you guys will notice that in some videos. Um, but other than that, all my other bills are pretty much the same. So for debt, I paid off just a little bit more than the minimum for each of my um, higher debts. And that I stuck with to a T compared to what I wrote out in my original budget. But then for my credit card, because I had a little bit more of that extra income, I was able to pay off a little bit more on this first credit card um, than I anticipated. So if you guys wanna see more information specifically about my debts, I'll have a link up here. Um, towards my payoff debt goals and what I owe. I'm also paying it off through the snowball method. So that's why I pay the minimum on some and then like a big sum amount towards the other one. So I'll also link that up here, what the snowball method is. But I was able to pay over $500 on that first card and I'm so proud of myself. The minimum on that card was like $50. So to be able to put so much more it's amazing and I feel so good about it. So I have like just a little bit over $1,000 left on that card that I owe and that is so, so exciting. So for savings, because I had a little bit extra income this month with that stimulus check, I put it right into savings. So I was able to pay more towards that this month than I anticipated, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, and it's going towards my $2,000 goal of an emergency fund. And if you guys wanna know why it's so important to have an emergency fund, I'll have that link up here. Um, but you know, I'm super, super excited to be able to put $600 towards that fund because now I'm gonna hit my $2,000 goal a lot quicker than I anticipated. Um, and then my car, I did have to adjust for that as well because I realized that my tabs were expired and I needed to get those. So that was about like $40. Um, food, I did do a little bit of shopping. Um, I wasn't planning on it. I was planning on only shopping out of my own pantry for all of January, which I pretty much did until this last weekend, just because I needed a few things that I needed to top off for because we were having some company over. Um, so I was... I had to feed them and I didn't want to just feed them beans and rice out of my pantry or ramen noodles. So um, we did end up spending the food budget and some of the household budget because we needed things like cat litter and dog treats, which I will be making my own dog treats from now on because it's a lot cheaper. Um, but before we were able to do that, we just needed to get a couple things for the house. So I did end up using that budget as well. So now I only have $200 left in my account, which is I know Dave Ramsey recommends only doing zero dollars, um, like max your budget out to zero. But for me, I like to have that $200 cushion as like a secondary savings, but keep it in my, in my bank account because, you know, you never know if there's going to be a surprise bill that gets pulled out somewhere or, um, you know, if I have my budget down to zero, my income down to zero, and then I have a bill that comes up that I have to wait until my next paycheck, I can't. I can't wait for that. So having that $200 as a backup is a good way to cover that cost until I get paid again. Hopefully that makes sense as well. But yeah, so I always max out my my budget, like this budget down to $200 and not zero because I like that 200 as an extra cushion. So yeah, overall, I am pretty proud of myself for how I handled January. Um, I feel like it was a lot easier this time around because I've already tried it before. I remember last year when I tried doing the no spend challenge for all of 2020, but then all the craziness happened. So I only did it for, I think, January and February. Um, I remember it was a lot harder last year because I was so in a habit of spending and I wasn't quite in the right headspace yet. But now that I had that experience, I feel like this year was a lot easier because I knew what to expect. I knew what my boundaries were and what my ground rules were. And I feel like having this system too, to really like fall back on was also very helpful. 
Um, so, you know, if I'm ever stuck somewhere or whatever, I can always look back at my budget and my tracking and I can visually see how much debt I'm paying off, which is awesome. So I'm really, really excited to see all these check marks. Yay. But yeah, overall, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. There were a couple things that I was pretty tempted by, you know, especially with online ads and all of that stuff. But that's where I felt like having a wish list in my bullet journal came really in handy because now I can write down all of the things that I was tempted to buy and didn't. So that way at the end of the year, I can reevaluate and see if there's anything on that list that is still worth purchasing once I'm done with my no spend challenge. Or I can realize what kind of things would have been really stupid for me to buy. So yeah, that is how a January went and I feel like it was a success and I'm super, super excited to see where the rest of the year and February takes us. Hope to see you guys soon. Bye.